In this video, you will learn how to add and subtract mixed numbers with the same denominator. Since you are adding and subtracting parts of the same whole, all you have to do is add the whole numbers together, add the numerators, and keep the denominators the same. Just make sure your fraction is in simplest form when you are done. We will start out with a basic addition of mixed numbers problem. Here we have 5 and 1 fourth plus 8 and 2 fourths. The first step is to add your whole numbers. Our whole numbers are 5 and 8. 5 plus 8 is 13. The next step is to add your numerators. Here we have 1 plus 2 gives us 3. The last step is to copy your denominator. Our denominator for these two fractions is 4, so we are joining the same whole. So our denominator for our answer will also be fourths. So our final answer is 13 and 3 fourths. Sometimes you will need to do some simplifying to your answer. Let me show you an example of that. Here we have 6 and 1 third plus 4 and 2 thirds. And the first step would be to add our whole numbers, 6 plus 4. And that gives us 10. The next step would be to add our numerators. So we have 1 plus 2. And that will give us 3. And we will copy down our denominator, which is the same, thirds. So our denominator will be 3. Notice that our fraction has the same numerator and denominator, 3 thirds. You know that's equal to one whole. So instead of writing 3 thirds, we will add another whole to our whole number. So we have 10 whole, and we are going to add another 1. So 10 plus 1 will give us a final answer of just 11. There will be no fraction in our answer. Our answer is 11 whole. When adding mixed numbers, you might end up with a numerator that is larger than your denominator. That is called an improper fraction. Improper fractions represent fractions that are greater than one. Let's learn how to simplify improper fractions into mixed numbers and then add them to our whole number. In this next example, we will need to convert an improper fraction into a mixed number when we get our final answer, and I will show you what we mean. So we'll start out just like all of the other problems. We will add our whole numbers. We have 9 and 2. 9 plus 2 gives us 11. Then we will add our numerators of 3 and 4, which gives us 7. And then we just copy our denominator, which is 5. So here is where you will see that we will need to do some simplifying because we have an improper fraction 7 fifths. So we will use long division to simplify 7 fifths, 7 divided by 5 because the fraction bar represents division. And 5 fits into 7 once, minus 5, and we're left with 2. That 2 becomes your new numerator and your denominator stays 5. So we have simplified 7 fifths to 1 and 2 fifths, but we have to add that to our 11 whole. So we have 11 plus 1 and 2 fifths. So 11 plus 1 is 12. And then we copy our fraction, 2 fifths. So your final answer will be 12 and 2 fifths. We simplified 11 and 7 fifths to 12 and 2 fifths because 7 fifths is greater than a whole. So we added that extra whole onto our 11 to give us 12 whole and two extra fifths. Now let's move on to subtraction and we will start out with a simple subtracting mixed numbers problem. So we will subtract our whole numbers just like we did with our addition. So we have eight minus one, which will give us seven. Then we will subtract our numerators. Four minus two gives us two. And then our denominator will just stay the same. And in this problem, it's fifths. So our final answer is seven and two fifths. There is no simplifying that needs to be done because you cannot divide two and five by the same number. And your numerator is not bigger than your denominator. Your numerator is also not equal to your denominator. So this fraction mixed number is in simplest form. Let's try another problem. This one will be a little bit tricky, but I think you can handle it. So we subtract our whole numbers, seven minus two, and gives us five. Now here's where the tricky part comes in. We have two numerators, three minus three. Well, three minus three is zero. So three sixths minus three sixths is going to be zero. 
you can write zero sixths, but you would end up rewriting it as just five. Five and zero sixths is equal to just five. When you have a number, a fraction, three sixths, and you're taking away the exact same fraction, three sixths, three six minus three six is zero. So we're just subtracting our whole numbers. Seven minus two equals five. So just like addition, there will be some times where you need to simplify your answer. So here is an example of that. We'll start out by subtracting our whole numbers. Four minus three gives us one. We will then move on to our numerators. Eight minus two gives us six. And then we copy our denominator of 10. So we have one and six tenths. But if you think about six tenths, there is something that you can divide six and 10 by. If you think about your factors of six, we have one times six and two times three. And if you think of your factors of 10, we have one times 10 and two times five. So you will notice that both of these have two in common. So we can divide six tenths by two to make sure that it's in simplest form. So now we can go ahead and divide six tenths by two. But when we do that, don't forget to copy your whole number of one. Now six divided by two is three and 10 divided by two is five. So our simplest form is one and three fifths. So four and eight tenths minus three and two tenths gave us one and six tenths. We simplified by dividing by two and our final answer is one and three fifths. When subtracting mixed numbers, you might need to borrow from the whole number in order to be able to subtract the fractions. Let me show you what I mean with some examples. This example will show you how to borrow from a whole number when subtracting mixed numbers. We have four and one fifth and we wanna take away three and two fifths. It really helps to rewrite the problems like this when you need to borrow. Because here we want to do one minus two for our fractions. And we can't do that. You cannot take two away from one. Just like you have to borrow when you're subtracting whole numbers, you are going to borrow when subtracting mixed numbers. What you do is you go to the whole number and you borrow from it. So I'm borrowing from the four. When I take one away, it becomes a three. Then all you have to do is add your denominator to your numerator. So we have five plus one which gives us a new numerator of six, and your denominator is going to stay the same. Now, three and six fifths is equal to four and one fifth. It's just shown as an improper fraction. And it is so important to know that you are not just adding one to your numerator, you're adding the denominator to the numerator. So we changed our one fifth into six fifths because we added five to our one. You're not just adding one more. So now we can do our subtraction. We can subtract our fractions, six fifths minus two fifths. Well, six minus two is four. And when we subtract fractions, our denominator stays the same. And now we can subtract our whole numbers. Here we have three minus three and three minus three is zero. When you have zero as a whole number, you do not need to write it. So our final answer is just four fifths. Let's try another example of borrowing from a whole number to subtract mixed numbers. So you'll see that we have two fourths and we are trying to take away three fourths and we can't. So we'll need to go to our whole number and borrow. When we borrow from the eight, we'll make that a seven. And then we will rename our fraction. And to do that, we just add our denominator to our numerator. So four plus two gives us six and our denominator stays fourths. Now we can do our subtraction, six, fourths minus three fourths gives us three fourths. And when we subtract our whole numbers, seven minus five equals two. So your final answer is two and three fourths. When subtracting mixed numbers, it is so important to determine whether or not you can subtract your fractions without borrowing from your whole number before you start the subtraction. If you need to borrow from the whole number, use this method. Don't just switch the fractions around. Thank you for watching my video. I hope it helped. Check out my Teaching Exchange Classroom for worksheets and centers. And don't forget to hit subscribe for more videos.